I travel to Dallas a lot. I travel to um I travel all over the country all the time. And you know you know what's so bothersome to me, <laughs> honestly. You know what's so bothersome to me is that I just feel like you got a raw deal, man. I genuinely do. Do you when you it when your tough. sentence was commuted, right? It, yes. Were was it a sense of relief or was it more like about time time to kind of thing? Oh, this relief. Was Listen, it? Listen, let me I mean them people meant, meant when they said 28 years, they meant it. They meant when you that. when you got that number, did it just like how did it feel when you got that number? Was you expecting it? Absolutely not. Well, let me not say absolutely not. The talking heads, I was in Milan and mm-hmm. holding. Yep. And the news that night, uh, they had Figer on and some other people, and they were talking about I was going to receive 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Then they had breaking news, and the prosecutor came out, and they, and they said that they were going to ask for 28 years. When that they is said crazy. that, when they said that, I told everybody sitting there watching TV, I said, that's what I'm about to get. No, big homie. You ain't going to give you that much. I said, that's what I'm going to get. It's already worked out. I want y'all to remember this moment. Yeah. This already worked out. They went back to the talking heads, all of them. Oh, no, I don't think you're going to get that much time. You know, the prosecutors have to ask for something over the top. and So they all telling me that. When we get there, this is exactly how the prosecutor stood up and asked for 28 years. The judge says, that sounds about right to me and hit the gavel. Yeah, so so that sounds about right to me. I, I wrote a chapter in the book about, uh, you know, how does 28 years sound right? I'm trying to figure out what did that hit. You tell, know? tell her, give us the give us the book. You got to get the people the book. They got to get this book. Yeah, Off the Grid. Off the Grid is, uh, is um, our, but this is funny. This is Alice Johnson calling. Alice Johnson is, uh, I talk about her too. She is the, the woman who Kim Kardashian helped get out uh, with Trump. Mm-hmm. But, um, off the grid is the book that I wrote as I was going through the process, and a lot of people always ask, "What was it like in there?" Yeah, you know, I, I spent over periods of time more than nine, ten months in in solitary confinement. I was in there for two hundred days straight. One whoa, time. whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> and you know, I still call him the mayor for me. So it's a little different. Yeah. Hold on, Mr. Mayor. Um. When you got the time, mm-hmm. when they hit the gavel, yes, what was you what was you thinking? Like, what was your thoughts? Um, without being what I call super spiritual, I didn't feel I felt a peace that I have not felt before. Since. You wasn't tripping, really? Then I wasn't tripping. Really? At all. I had Man, to, that is football. I had numbers. to try to keep myself from smiling or laughing. It was something going on. I mean, I, I felt completely covered in that moment. I mean, without, those are, uh, I, I can only describe it as something pouring over me and I felt completely covered. I could hear the judge talking, but it was like I was in a different place all mm. And that's why when I walked out, I smiled and turned to my family. They were crying. Uh-huh. And I turned around and I said, no doubt, no fear. And I don't even know where those words came from. Mm-hmm. But when I got to Milan and they slammed that door and I sat down, um, the most uh, profound depression I ever felt started mm. because I knew they were serious. Yeah. And I knew at that moment that I wasn't going to see my sons and then my then wife for a very long time. Mm. Not 28 years, but I knew that I was not going to be involved in their lives the same anymore. Mm-hmm. And that realization was, uh, it was a very, very defeating um, place for me and my soul. Yeah, it was it was difficult, and um, so you know when you go through that, my last um, year in um, in prison, I was in solitary two hundred twenty five days out of three sixty five. Why? Um, I went over there because I don't know if y'all remember they 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 actually gave me release one time, so I went over there in, my, in May. Mm-hmm. Went there in May. And they quarantine you for 21 days before you leave. So I went in there 21 days. And then you remember I was there for nine days or eight days. And uh, Bob Barr, who was then the attorney general, he took away my release. 
he snatched it. So I signed release papers, everything. I'm, 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 I'm talking to my mother. And I'm on my way, and, and they mm -hmm. took the release in six days. The warden came by and said, we don't believe something's going to happen, so we're going to leave you here. And I said, cool, because he said, if we put you back in the unit, you had to come back in 21 days. Yeah. So a month later, a month later, two months later, three months later, you started, you know, okay, we think something's going on. And that never happened. So I go back to the unit for three weeks. And when I'm in the unit, I go into heart failure. I ain't never had a problem with my heart in my life. I did have COVID, and that's what they think happened. So I'm sitting there watching the Lakers in the championship in the bubble. And I'm sitting there like, man, what's going on? Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's crazy. I go back to my room. I lay down. When I when I try to get up, I can't get up. They lock the doors. There's a fight. They lock the doors. So we locked in. The, the officers leave. They go off somewhere. So I'm in the cell all night. I can't stand up. I sat there by the toilet. They open the door at 5 in the morning. I fall asleep. I get up. I stumble up to the uh, uh, health services. The young cats helped me up there. They wouldn't see me. I go back to the unit. Literally, for 17 hours, I was in cardiac arrest. That's crazy. I went to the hospital, lights and siren. When I got to the hospital, I had an ejection fraction. My heart was working at 20%. So I'm in the hospital seven days. I go back to, after that, if I get the defibrillator, I go back to uh, the hole. I yeah. go back to the shoe, solitary. And so I stay there another uh, hundred and something days from September all the way to January 20th. So when you ask what it, January 19th, they're announcing on CNN, I got an orderly. I tell this story in the book, and off the grid, get the book. Um, it's on Amazon, check it out. Fred Bradley, who was uh, from Arkansas, my man, he kept coming by the cell, because I can't see, you know, you can't see no TV when you're yeah. locked up in, 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 the, in the shoe. So he kept, man, they on CNN, man, they telling me, they saying there's gonna be some commutations tonight. Big homie, they ain't said your name, but you're gonna be on there, blah, blah, blah. He came by about 9, 10 o'clock. Did you believe it, or was you just like? Yeah, I believed it. I, I, I was already sold out. I, I gotta get out of here. Something's gonna happen for me. Nobody told me, because I ain't got on the phone. I've not sent any messages. But I just believed that something was gonna happen for me. I really did. I've been praying. I believe it. Um, this is wrong. And I believe that Trump, I, I believe that Trump was the only person who would have did it. I don't believe really? Biden, Obama, Obama didn't do it. Um, Biden, Hillary Clinton, I, don't believe, I believe that this president was specifically designed to be that radical to be able to get me out. Everybody else was scared. And so um, I'm in there and uh, the, the, the CEO comes by at midnight for the midnight count for all the people who've been in the feds, you know, and I hit the door, you ain't supposed to mess up the count. I said, Ortiz, man, listen, I just got a commutation. He said, who told you that, Kilpatrick? <laughs> I said, man, I got a commutation. Go look. He said, who told you that? I said, man, the Lord told me. He said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, he said, I'll be back after count. So I, I lay down and sleep. One in the morning, he hit the door, <laughs> opened the thing, and he holds up the free press and news articles. He said, man, you just got a commutation. Well, I went through, so you talking about release, man, a few tears. I got on the floor, man, on my knees, thank God for what. And I went to sleep. He came back at 3 in the morning. How could you sleep? You're going home. They're talking about you on CNN. Yeah. You got your picture. I said, really? He said, they got you and Little Wayne on there. I said, wow. <laughs> I'm with Wheezy? Why well, done moved up? Wow. <laughs> and so all, that night, the, the warden came in there at like 5-something in the morning. And he opened the door. I was asleep. They couldn't believe I was asleep. I was not listening. Man. It was over. It's relief. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's like, yeah. And so the warden came, so I'm going to get you out of here quick and quiet. I got on a plane at 12 o'clock noon. I was sitting in my mother's living room in my sister's house, actually uh, eating crab legs and fried fish. And was it tea. different when you got out? Like, was it a completely different environment, world? It was. Was it really? It was. It was. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the first thing I did is I went to, after I was there, yeah. I went to Walmart, right? It's a Walmart up there. Yeah. And what was different first thing was yoga pads. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm seeing, I'm just, listen, I'm not talking about and when I'm looking, I'm in there like, what the? And so I'm like, what the? And you know, you can see through some of them and they be, these people were huge. <laughs> Huge people walking around. I'm like, what have we got? What's happening here? So my sons was crying, laughing. And I said, man, this is what? How did, how did she come out? There? What are y'all doing out here, man? 
I thought that was the craziest thing in the world. Who walks around like this, man? Oh. Half dressed. Plus, I'm in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was even extra. It yeah. was like, man, listen, this is crazy. So, um, it's, it's so that I, I went to Walmart, and the first thing that I noticed, my son, so I want to tell everybody. That was the first thing I noticed. Like, what is this? Like, yeah. when they start doing this, so. It was that kind of thing. I, I had to relearn a whole yeah, lot of stuff. That is so and, funny. And, uh, you know, the technology was different. You know, it was a lot different. The technology was different. And so I was kind of nervous about phones and stuff really? like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course you're nervous about phones. Yeah, all that. <laughs> and they're going to be listening. And then this is it. And then how you get in here, I ain't using it. So, I mean, but the longer you're out. Yeah the more you see that things haven't changed that much, but the people have. Mm. You know, I went in, I had a 16-year-old 16, 16 twins and 11-year-old. I come out, I have 25-year-old twins that's and a 19-year-old. That's crazy. And so it's, uh, that's different. I, I, these are not my little boys. Yeah. They grown men. And, and, they, and we had to learn how to deal with each other as grown men. And so are they as tall as you? Yeah, I mean, Jelani is about six two and a half, six three, and Jaleel is about six three and a half. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah, um, jo I mean, Jonas is, excuse my is French, not. my bad.